Have you ever plugged your guitar directly into an audio interface or a mixer and noticed that the tone seems kind of dark and weak? Maybe you've experienced this with certain pedals or maybe even some line level devices. The basic reason for this is an impedance mismatch between the output of your guitar, which if you have passive pickups is a high impedance output, and the input of the device, the mixer or the audio interface that you're plugging into, which will have a low impedance input. The mismatch in this electrical handshake means that the signal gets loaded down and you lose volume and high end. A while back, the really smart engineers at Universal Audio figured out a clever way of implementing a variable impedance circuit in the analog front end of their interfaces. They call this Unison technology, and this circuit is controlled and utilized by any of the Unison enabled plugins on the Universal Audio platform. Maybe you've heard people talk about the channel strip emulations that Universal Audio makes, and recording engineers particularly love how those channel strip emulations interact with microphones and line level sources. And that's because of this Unison technology, this variable impedance circuit. But one thing that's not often spoken about are the Unison enabled high Z inputs and the possibilities that these inputs open up for guitar players and bass players. When coupled with any Unison enabled guitar amplifier plugin, these high Z inputs take on the impedance characteristic of the amplifier in the physical domain. This is important to note that these inputs actually change impedance based upon which plugin is selected. This is not something that's happening in software. This is all taking place in the analog front end of the interface to provide you with the same interaction of the guitar and the input as you would have plugging into the actual physical amp. This is something that Universal Audio believes is essential to creating an accurate emulation. Now we're going to go ahead and take a listen to the Marshall Plexi Classic plugin, which is a Unison enabled plugin that comes standard with any Universal Audio interface. <laughs> I'm plugged into channel one on the high input right now, and the plugin manual tells me that the input impedance here is one meg ohm, which is actually right on for the input impedance of a plexi. So I'm gonna go down now and click on the low in input. The input impedance just changed. You would have heard the Apollo click, and the input impedance changed to around 100 kilo ohms, and you're gonna hear that the sound is different now. Low input, and I'll play and then switch back to the high input. All of that's taking place because of the impedance. Now another cool feature of this plugin that you can actually do just like you can do with the real amp is you can jump the channels. So I'm going to go back to the high input, click again, and then I'm jumping the channels here. So let's hear what this sounds like. The Marshall Plexi Classic plugin gives me the close mic sound of a cranked Plexi amp. But if I want to add some room and record that too, that's very easy. I'm using the Precision Reflection Engine, which again, comes bundled stock with any universal audio interface. And I've set that up on an aux, and I'm recording the output of that aux on a stereo audio track inside of Pro Tools. So here we go with the room sound. <laughs> There are also some Unison enabled Stompbox plugins available. One of those that comes standard with any Universal Audio interface is the Raw Distortion pedal. I'll leave it to your imagination for you to figure out what that's based on, but uh, it is a three letter word that begins with R. And I have that set up in the Unison slot in the console and I've moved the Plexi down to an insert. I have my inserts enabled for recording and we're plugging in the Plexi, we're just going straight into channel one. I'm not jumping the channels for this example. So here is the raw distortion into the Plexi.
Now you'll notice that because that impedance relationship is right, I can actually roll the guitar volume down and uh, you know, I don't, I don't, there's no adverse effects. It's just as if I was playing into this rig live. There are a host of other Unison-enabled guitar-centric plugins available, including some landmark amps and effects. It's also possible to run a pedal board in front of the Unison-enabled Hi-Z inputs with some very good results. In this next example, I'll be using the Fender 55 Deluxe plugin, and for some reverb, I have the AKG BX20 set up on an aux in the console, and I'm recording that on a stereo track in the door. And in front of the input, I'm running a fuzz pedal just to give you an idea of how this works. I have the guitar volume down around six, and you'll hear how the plug-in, as I bring the volume up, gets a little crunchier. Now obviously a Unison enabled interface, even with the stock plugins, makes it easy to get great guitar tones for recording, but it's also a viable system for playing live. There have been instances where I've had to plug directly into a PA on a quiet stage, so meaning no amplifiers were allowed and everyone was monitoring with in-ears, and I just took an Apollo Twin, a laptop, my pedal board and my guitar, and I was good to go with no perceivable latency because all of the processing is taking place on the interface. So there's a brief rundown of some of the benefits and features of Unison technology for guitar players and bass players. Head on over to AmericanMusical.com to find out more about Universal Audio's products.